All right, folks, let's, let's say a prayer. Most divine and gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the opportunity we can come and worship you. Thank you for the opportunity you're giving me, Father, to yield myself to you as I proclaim what you'd have me to proclaim. Praise, honor, and glory be unto you. And then, Father, as we uh, just silence within us any voice but your own, Father, so all we'll hear is your words. Take all distractions from us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Lisa, I look all right? Okay. <laughs> you know, when, you, when someone's talking, you know, they've they got a little brief window to talk. You know, and you, why do they have their hand in their pocket? Or why do, they, why do they have their hand out of their pocket? Their tie's messed up, you know, and it's like a distraction. We don't want any distractions. So I want to make sure everything looks all right. Anyway, um, let me ask you guys something. Why do you come to church? No one answer. Just think about this. Why do you come to church every Sunday? Y'all, you guys come to church every Sunday, and you, and you put money in the offering plate every Sunday. Why do you do that? Don't answer that. Just think about that for a little while. Well, before this passage I just read, an event that had just happened was Jesus Christ was on a colt, and he was going into the city of Jerusalem, and they were laying down palm branches, and they were hollering out, Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna in the highest! And, they, and, and all these chosen folks of God, they were all cheering for Jesus because they had heard and had seen him do many miracles. He'd, made the, he'd, he'd healed the sick, made the lame to walk, fed thousands of people with just crumbs, pretty much. And so these people, they were looking for an earthly king, and this was their opportunity. So their mind thought was a little off. That's what happened prior to this. So here it is the next day. And so that was a stressful time for Jesus, I'm sure, all that excitement and all that going on. Don't you, don't you imagine that was tough, you know? And then the next day, they're probably exhausted, you know, the disciples. And it was late in the evening when they left Jerusalem. So they're going back to Jerusalem this morning. And they're going back because it's a time of sacrifice, and that's where the temple is. And so they're on their way to the temple. And as they're walking along, Jesus, he sees this fig tree in the distance. And there's a picture of the fig tree on the screen. He sees this fig tree, and the fig tree has got these luscious leaves. And, and you know, I did a little research on figs, and you know, figs are very, very good for us. They're full of vitamins and minerals and nutrients, and they are um, antioxidants, full of antioxidants. And they say that uh, 100 grams of a fig is only 75 calories. And it's just, it's just good for health and well-being, you know. And so Jesus is walking along, and so he knows that all the goodness in a fig. And he sees this tree, and he's hungry, and it's full of leaves, and in his mind, you know, he's looking forward to getting to that fig tree. And he's probably told his disciples, look, guys, there's a fig tree up here. We're going to just get us a figs when we get up there because they're probably hungry too. And they're walking along. They get to the fig tree and guess what? The scripture says there was no figs. And why wasn't there any figs on that tree? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't time for them to have. It wasn't a season. So, um, you know, now I'm, Jesus is a little disappointed. So he says to the tree, he says, you know, may no one eat fruit from you again is what he said to the tree. And they just kept on going. They didn't think nothing of it, I'm sure. They get to the temple. And you know what, man? When, when, whenever we, we need to always have our thought process right when we talk to God. For an example, let me just, let me just back up a little bit. So these folks go into the temple. And um, you know what? You can't make no deals with God. God knows everything. He knows everything about everything. God, there's nothing that God don't know. And when you pray... By the time you finish praying, God has not learned anything new about you. He already knows everything to begin with. And so, um, and, and, uh, so why do we try to bargain with God like we do some folks? You know, like you'll, you'll see some people, you know, and you try to make them see it your way, and so you try to bargain with them. It's kind of like, like if you did this. If you got on your knees, you know, and you're praying to God, you know, and, and you feel bad, and you say, you know, God, I, I, I pledged that I was going to give $25 a week and I was going to give it to you, $25 a week is what I pledge, Father. And, and, and you know what? The reason I didn't put that $25 into that offering plate today is because you know, God, that there's this shoe store down the road down here. And it, there's these two cute pairs of shoes, and I could buy those shoes, and I could come to church and glorify you, Father. So that's why I didn't do it. Exactly. <laughs> And so this is what happens with your thought process. This is real, guys. This is what happens. So you, and, you, and you justify that in your mind, and you get up from praying, and you feel good about it. Well, you know what? You feel good because you said that to God, and y'all have talked about it. And matter of fact, you in your heart, you think that God is actually commanding you now to go get those shoes, you know? You call the Bible study class up, and you tell the Bible study class, you say, 
look, man, I've something's come up. I can't come to Bible study tonight. I just can't come. Something's come up. And in the Bible study class, well, they're, well, they're not coming. She's got something going on. And it's, I'm sure it's important. You know how Christian folks they are. So I'm sure they're doing something good for somebody. You know, let's, let's, I don't know what it is. We'll find out. Let's pray for them. Now you got the Bible study praying about your lie. You know what I mean? And it just continues and we build like that. And you get, you buy the shoes, you come home, you put the shoes on. Them shoes don't match this outfit. But you know what? There was a dress next door in that little shop. I'm going to go get that dress. Where am I going to get the money? Well, you know what? It was less than $25. I just used next week's money, buy the dress, put the shoes on, come to church, and glorify God. I'm going to glorify God. <laughs> got it all figured out. So keep that in your mind as I go on. So, so Jesus gets to the temple. and He walks to the temple. He walks in there. And, and there's these money changers. Now, God knows everything. He knows what's in the hearts and minds of folks. He knows your intent. And so these folks are out there, and, and, they're, and they're, people come from afar to the temple to make sac- to atone for sins. That's how you used to have to atone for sins. We did, Jesus Christ's time hadn't come yet. And so all these folks are coming, and some of them from afar, and they don't have doves with them, and they don't have grains to sacrifice and sheep, so they're buying it in the temple. They're buying and selling, and, and Jesus walks in, and he sees the intent of these money changers, and these money changers, you know what they're doing? They're making a profit. They're, 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 not, they're not trying to help these folks out enough. And then the Pharisees, God's chosen people that know the law, the Mosaic law, these folks here, you know what they're doing? They're approving of all this. They're approving of all this. They're probably getting a cut from the money changers, you know, and they're all puffed up and they're approving up. And in their mind, they've lied to themselves over the year and they've built themselves up. Matter of fact, God Almighty walks through the door they don't even recognize God Almighty. They, these folks here, of all people, should recognize Jesus Christ if they know the law so much. They should know, well, this, this must be Jesus Christ. I've heard about him, and this is everything the prophet said. This has got to be him. They didn't even, they just threw that out because Jesus Christ was ruining their gimmick they got going on. And that's exactly what, that's God's chosen people. That's God's chosen people doing that. And so Jesus, you know, he throws a fit, and he starts throwing the tables over. Y'all know that whole story. That's another sermon all within itself. And so then... They leave, it's late, they leave Jerusalem. The very next morning, the very next morning, they're walking down the same way they went, and as they're walking along, Peter sees this fig tree, and he says, he says, Rabbi, Father, Jesus, the, the, tree, that you, the tree that you cursed, look at it, it's withered, and, and it's withered from the roots. And let me tell you something. This, this story, man, this has been a tough story for me to figure out. And God's revealed three things to me, and I'm going to share with you what they are. Number one, let me just, back in that day, there was no fast food joints. There was no uh, convenience stores. The only way you had to live off the land, everybody lived off the land. Even little children understood agriculture in that day. They, everybody understood it. Understood it. They knew the only way you could eat was we had to have good weather. We had to produce fruit. I mean, you had to you had to cultivate. You had to make it happen. Everybody knew that. And so, what happens is these guys they see that tree and they're shocked that it's, it's withered from the roots. Because let me tell you guys something. When y'all came in, did you notice all that shrubbery on the side of the road up there? It's still green. We pulled it up yesterday. This has been one day event. This has only been one day, and this tree's been withered. Those bushes are still green. We could probably put some sand and water on those bushes. And they'd probably come back. Some of them would. You know, do y'all agree with that? So anyway, my point is this. There's three things that bothers me about this story that always bother me. Number one, like we all said, it wasn't the time for fruit on this fig tree. So why did Jesus curse this tree? That's just unfair. Isn't that unfair? This tree ain't done nothing wrong. He's green. It's luscious. You know, Jesus is just hungry and he's just mad. He's just mad. You know, does that give him any right to curse this tree? Well, let me, let me tell you a couple of things I figured out. God's revealed this to me. Through, through, I've heard it through Scripture and listened to other folks and things. This is how he reveals ourselves to us. You've got to get in that word. You've got to read the word. You listen to the word on the radio. You watch it on whatever you've got to do. You've got to feel yourself for things to be revealed to you. And this, this is the thing right here. So this is an object lesson for those disciples. They see this tree, they remember, they all heard him say it, and they all remember when they came back by, and so the object lesson is this. What's going to happen if we don't produce fruit? That's the object lesson. And another thing is this. This is, and throughout all the Bible, they always refer to the fig tree as God's chosen people. Going into, the, going into uh, Jerusalem, he already knew what was going to happen because he knows everything. When he went into Jerusalem, he knew the thought of folks already. And so when he walked in there, so when, the, when they come back and the tree's all dried up and everything, this is just, a, they understood. They remember what Jesus said. 
They knew what happened. His chosen people have let him down. Do you know that it's human nature? Listen to this. It's human nature to reject God. It's human nature to re reject God's will. That's human nature, man. That's a fact. We automatically want to reject God. Think about yourself. Just think about it for a minute. Is that true or not? Just think about it. It's human nature to want to reject God, to want to reject God's will. And the only way to overcome that is through getting in the Word, studying Jesus Christ, prayer, meditation, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can get over that. Because it's human nature to want to reject God. That's the only way you can get over that. Number two, another thing about this tree, that another, a second thing is this. You know, um, there's only, I've only got two things. I said three. <laughs> I was trying to think of the third thing I couldn't think of. This might bother some of you folks, but listen. There's this beautiful tree. It's sitting there, and there's ain't done nothing wrong. God curses this tree, and he withers it up. Listen, why does bad things happen to good people? Why does bad things happen to good people? We've heard it all our lives, man. People have just haven't done anything wrong, and, and, and bad things happen to them. And they're good people. You know what I mean? They go to church, they do this and that. Why do things happen the way they do? Here's this tree. I tell you, the purpose for this tree to be born, to, be, to grow this tree, to be cultivated and grow and to be green was just for this one purpose, for Jesus to curse this tree. Because this was a symbol. He's, he's symbolizing something here. I mean, he's using it for God's worth. When something bad hits us, man, when something bad goes wrong in our life, you know what we're supposed to do? What's the very next thing Jesus told the disciples when they said, look, the tree is withered. The very next thing he said was what? He said, have faith. That's the very next word he said was, have faith. He said, matter of fact, if you, if you, if you have enough faith and you believe in something strong enough, it, it'll happen. He said, you can even tell this mountain to pick itself up and throw itself in the sea, and if you believe without doubting, that's possible. It could happen. I believe that, folks. I believe if we have a strong enough faith, they kid me all the time because I call it desire. If you got desire, you can do anything. If I told my son David, to get, get David, get up on the roof and do this or that, and if he didn't want to do it, David, he just, he just, he, he'd be like that right there. He just wouldn't get up there and do it. But if for whatever reason, if all of a sudden David decided, you know, I'm going to get up on the roof, he wouldn't even need a ladder. I guarantee you, David would get up on that roof somehow if he wanted. <laughs> because it's desire, man. So we have to do, we have, what we got to do, we got to pray for God's will. And if you don't have God's will, you got to pray for God to give you the will to have his will, to want his will. You know, that's what we got to do. And um, Jesus Christ came into this world, man. He saved sinners. And he loves us. And if there's anybody here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm telling you right now is the time. And it don't matter what your life. Oh, I know, I know there was a third thing. I just realized it. There was a third thing. <laughs> this is about the mountain. This is about the mountain because I'm just going to allude into that, is this. That mountain is an obstacle in your life. That mountain is an obstacle in your life. You need Jesus Christ with these obstacles because that could be a, it could be a relationship with someone. That obstacle could be a disease. It could be um, more month. I mean, yeah, more month than there is money. It could be a financial situation. There's so many things that could be that obstacle. I'm telling you, folks, if you get Jesus Christ in your life, and y'all all know this, he, that, that'll wipe it, all that stuff out, man. You'll be able to do anything you want to with that obstacle. And we got to pray and, without ceasing, and we got to pray and believe what we're praying about. And you got to pray with what God would have you to pray about. Don't pray for a Cadillac. Friends, he ain't going to give you a Cadillac. He'll give you a way to get to the store and back, but it might not be in a Cadillac. It may be a bicycle. You, know, you don't know what it's going to be. So we need to pray in God's will what he wants us to pray for. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you, right now you don't have to change nothing in your life, not a thing. All you got to do is t admit, we already know we're all human nature, we're sinners. Human nature is we're already a sinner. Just tell you, look, I'm already a sinner, God. I know I'm a sinner. Just tell him, come into my heart. He's knocking at your heart. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door knocking. If any man come and open that door, I'll come in and sup with him and him with me. We'll sit down together at the table. We'll commune with one another. Ask God into your heart to commune and then build a relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, guys, when I was a little boy, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and from that very moment, I had eternal life. I didn't have it when I died. I ain't dead yet. It don't start when you die. It starts as soon as you accept Him as your Lord and Savior. I got eternal life. My mom and daddy's gone on. My brother's gone on. A lot of ancestors have gone on. 
we're going to be together again in heaven. And then we're all going to be together again in heaven. You know, it's just great. We're all going to be together. All of us that believe and love Jesus Christ, man, we're going to all be together in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So why do I go to church on Sundays? Why do I go to church every Sunday? Why do I put money in the basket? You know why I do it? Because it's human nature to reject the will of God. It's human nature to reject God, period. So we've got to come to church, guys. We've got to come to church. We've we, we got to get involved. And, and don't be selfish about it. You may not want to come to church. I'm looking forward to see Anna come into the church. She brings a smile on my face, guys. She just brings a smile on my face. You may bring a smile on someone's face. You may have a hug that, that they haven't had a hug all week. And you, you just built that person up. And so... That's why, we, that's why we do this stuff, guys. And, and, and we got to get involved. We've got to stay involved. If you're not involved in anything, in any committee or anything, you need to do it right now, I'm telling you. We all got, you got to get involved in it. you got, you got to make it, you got to make it work. we got to make it work. And our new pastor is starting on the uh, 20th of October. Isn't that correct? And so then, let's, let's be active in this church, man. Let's let this be an active church. God's got a lot, God's got a lot for this church right here. I'm telling you. I promise you, you got a lot for this church. And so that's one more thing I want to say is that God loves you folks and so do I. Amen.